Here is Bruce Lee Money. Thermal and a quarter. Everyone knows that name. And you know what? When I have been calling so many of these senior guys and, and all of that, and I've always thought of Thermal and a quarter being the youngster band. And, you know, I, I've always said, but when I actually looked up these guys, you know, I've, I've been to their concerts. I've been to three of their shows. I've always thought they are youngsters. And then I realized 24 years in the business, seven albums. And I was like, oh, hell, these youngsters are not youngsters. They're, they're, they're seriously established guys. And, you know, from uh, coming from south of India, you've heard of, uh, you know, two big names which always keep coming in the, in the uh, forefront. One is Avial and the other is Thermal and a Quarter. And every festival which has... Thurman and a quarter coming in as an headlining act, you are assured of great quality music. So that's something which, you know, I know I'm not allowing you to speak at all, so at least say hi. <laughs> hello, hello, Coco. Thank you so much for having us, Thank, uh, having me. This is uh, really strange times we're living in right now. I and, know. Uh, it's good that you thought of us as a... Uh, junior, youngster, band, it always helps when people think we are young. But uh, <laughs> yeah, 24 years, 8 albums and uh, 25th year coming up next year. So yeah, it's been a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, oh it's, it's 8 albums. It's not yes. 7 albums. 8. eight. Yeah. Man, there you go. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. So, uh, I mean, here's my, uh, here's my question. I mean, uh, uh, yesterday I was sitting and listening to, you know, World Gone Mad. That's the new and, one. Yeah, the, your latest one, which is 2020. And uh, uh, I was listening to the, the kind of stuff that you guys are doing, you know, the, that entire harmonic structure and those, you know, uh, songwriting going through key changes. And you, know, it, you, you make it so effortless sounding, uh, you know, in terms of the songwriting, as well as the mix, uh, the instrumentation, the... Uh, the entire structure of the song, even if it's like a seven, eight minute track, it's it keeps you completely involved. I mean, how do you manage to do this? You know, it's 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 really awesome. I mean, when I was listening to the album, I said, this doesn't sound like an Indian band. It sounds like a, you know, I've, you know, somehow there was. Some kind of, uh, you know, it reminded me a little bit of Men at Work, you know, you know, the, the kind of vocals or the kind of, especially that song Distance, you know. I just want to know how, how you approach your production, your songwriting and, and uh, with all those, those crazy uh, caudal structures and how do you do that? Wow, first, thank you for listening so intently, Coco. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, really, it's really an honor to have people like you listening to the music and listening seriously. Increasingly nowadays, we find that, uh, you know, music is, uh, it's, I guess, it's, uh, music is not consumed the way it was maybe 20, 25 years ago. It's, it's become part of, a, it's like an additional activity. Music is playing when you're doing other things. When it's not, it's, it's very rare to find people who just put on music and listen and do nothing else, right? But give their full attention to music. So, yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for the attention. It's really nice to it get was, that from you. It was um, a pleasure listening to the entire album, man. Believe thank me. You. Thank you, man. Yeah, but this this particular album, I mean, it's uh, uh, I wrote the lyrics uh, in 2016. I wrote all all ten songs uh, in 20, so four years ago now, and okay. across the last three years, we've been you know steadily sort of writing, producing. We put out a couple of singles, then uh, we went into a proper recording session. And the hardest thing for us to do with this album was to stay in this zone, you know, because all these songs are. Uh, I'd say there are about maybe three positive kind of songs in the album, but everything else is pretty much about all the crazy crap that's happening around the world today. And, mm. uh, you know, as a band across the last 20 years, uh, we've always been kind of a happy-go-lucky vibe, you know. It's always been kind of groovy, snarky, fun, you know, that kind of, most of our songs are like that. But this album was very different because it's a very serious yeah. content throughout. And yeah. uh, staying in that zone for uh, writing all 10 songs uh, was difficult in the beginning. I'd say between 2016 and 2017, it was, it, it was kind of hard, you know, and sometimes the songs would sort of devolve into being, you know, groovy and happy and all. And we'd have to say, no, 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 hang on. This is not <laughs> the vibe of this album. Okay. We have to get back into. 
But okay. across 2018 and 2019, it was becoming increasingly easy to stay in that zone because all you had to do was look around, read the headlines, and you were in that zone. <laughs> you know, it was as simple. Well, it's so it's so <laughs> sad, but yeah, it's, it's sad, true. but it's true. You know. Yeah. And uh, so, and we planned the release of this album about four months ago. We had a tour set up from mid March to mid May, and now, of course, all that is gone. And the album dropped on March 20th, just a couple of days before the damn lockdown. So we did not plan for it to be this relevant. We did not plan for it to, you know, have this much sort of association with what's going on. It's just a crazy accident, and that's just the way it happened. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the songwriting and stuff like that, I think uh, across the last uh, so many years that we've been together with this lineup, uh, we've grown, I think, a little bit musically together, and we've grown as people also in terms of, you know, all of us are, <laughs> you know, so much older right now and. Uh, I guess it's yeah, all that is what really goes into that uh, the cohesion that's kind of visible in the album, I suppose. Um, where uh, like Leslie's been in the band for almost ten years now, Tony has been in the band from 2006, so almost uh, 14 years now. Rajiv and I have been together for 25 years now, so Ooh. there is a yeah, there is a. So you're not really a youngster. You just no, look like one. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> you lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, uh, we've, we've been around the block and uh, it's good to, uh, we're really fortunate to have this group that uh, we have, you know, and to work together like this towards a common uh, thing because uh, it is it is really hard in these circumstances and in these times to hang on to something like this for as long as we have. So we're really fortunate, yeah. Fantastic. But uh, here's the thing, I mean, this, this uh, entire thing about even rock music as we as we speak about it what do you think uh, is uh, is the uh, viewership or listenership or whatever you might call it you know uh, across the world i mean where do you think rock sits i mean rock was always niche across the world even in when it was at its peak you know in terms of uh, i'm talking about the 80s and 90s where uh, rock and roll uh, was was at its at its glory, where where you you've seen these big ass rock acts, you know, flying their own planes and you know living larger than life. Uh, even then, in terms of the statistical uh, viewership or listenership of of uh, rock music, it was always a very small percentage. But today, as there are bigger and bigger uh, genres coming out, you know, whether it's whether it's R and B, whether it's EDM, where, whether it is any of the other, I'm, I'm not talking about jazz at all, though, you know, <laughs> that genre poor thing is always, you know, being, <laughs> you know, uh, it requires the biggest skill set, but at this, uh, unfortunately gets the smallest viewership. But in terms of rock and roll, which was always seen to be the simpler form of music and which is supposed to connect directly with uh, this thing, uh, where do you see the, uh, the future of rock and roll? Let's forget about the world. Let's talk about just India. What, what do you? No, it's interesting that you that you bring this up. I mean, um, I don't know if you know, but uh, one of our songs, this "Leaders of Men," which probably I'll play later on today, is no. uh, is getting some radio airplay in Europe and in the US and all that. And uh, we were just uh, we didn't expect anything. We said, okay, some stations are playing it. We don't know. It's, it's on know, number four, right? Right it's now. So it's on number four in the Euro indie charts. It debuted at number one on the world indie charts. Okay, wow. which which makes uh, which wow. I mean it's crazy. We don't even know how to feel about it because I, I, the world is going through some really tough times, and at this time for this to happen, you know, it's it's really nuts. But uh, I think uh, uh, yeah, while it's true that uh, any kind of non-mainstream chic, uh, sorry, um, you know, uh, niche uh, music is. Uh, uh, seems to uh, seems to attract a uh, smaller and smaller audience, but the audience is pretty devoted to it. It's pretty, you know, uh, strong in its following. It's pretty committed to its uh, its support. They're of, extremely of loyal. Yeah, that loyalty and all that is there. But I think uh, like this uh, recent thing for a song like ours to debut or this high on indie charts, uh, at least not uh, obviously signed uh, band charts and all that. Uh, it just says that it's just about. I think maybe it's just about. Uh, the music and its relevance and how people are uh, reacting to it and that could be with any uh, with, with, with any style it doesn't have to specifically be rock or hip hop or pop or anything it, it, it's just about maybe the timeliness of the of the track and how relevant it is to everyone and how it's consumed because 
uh, we live in a world when information exchange is instantaneous we live in a world when uh, the, the 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 information that's coming to all of us also is so huge and overwhelming and uh, it's it's too much to take in right it's uh, sure. none of nobody can process the amount of information that's coming at them every day just on their phones right yeah. if you have to look at every message every forward every uh, 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 facebook notification every instagram you just can't it's just too much it's an ocean and that's sure. ha- happening every second so in in between all that i guess if all all we can be happy about is that again we are fortunate enough to continue doing this thing that we love uh we are you know making music that we want with no one telling us what to do there is no record label or producer or uh, or big daddy saying no i don't like that chord don't use it i don't like this word don't use it yeah. it's, com- it's complete freedom we do what we want and uh you know we'll fight for that we have fought for this all this time and we'll keep doing that uh and that's what it is and as long as you're you're a- you're able to do it and you find whatever way it takes to keep that going right you uh you you know you do some other business on the side you try and you know do some other music but there are lots of artists who have multiple bands right band a is the one that you keep close to your heart yeah. band b c d e f are the things that you do to make yeah. sure the bills are paid all of it yeah. is fine all of that is fine it's it's the way you have to move ahead there's no sure. there's no good or bad there it's just about true. what needs to be done true true and also i feel you know what what's happening is with uh, you know bands like indie bands like us where uh, whether you you know you you release your stuff on what what used to be mainstream media you know labels and stuff like that you know uh, the people who want to actually listen to you they they find you and they listen to your stuff Mm-hmm. i've seen this happening you know uh, songs that we you know were which were up on soundcloud with zero promotion with anything nothing nothing and we go to uh, go play concerts and they ask you for the most you know obscure songs on that list of songs that you have and we haven't even rehearsed them because we don't even know the people have heard them but it's surprising to you know suddenly get a uh, somebody is shouting in the middle of this thing you know that oh, play this song or play that one and we as mohan and me look at each other stump they know this song so i mean that's the beauty of you know uh, having a dedicated audience who follow your music and if if you're not available on on big platforms and and stuff like that you know guys like us who have not really pushed that you know social media and any anything like that you know in the past and and uh, they have happened to know the songs i think it's purely uh, 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 their brilliance the audience's brilliance to actually be able to make sure that they know what's happening with you know we are lucky that you know rock and roll finds us that kind of a uh, uh, loyal and faithful i i, I hate the w- word fans but you know yeah. uh, as it's usually called fan we, i always say they friends of the band you know so yeah. and and they are actually involved in your music the way uh, you know family is or friends are no it's so crazy think- I, and it's uh, it's really it's really you know heartwarming when uh, you know we put out a song that is very kind of it's not not designed to be a pop hit it's really sure. sort of inward inward looking reflective sure. Sure. Uh, not intended to you know be the top of the charts or whatever you put that out yeah. and then you get you get all these messages from people saying it really reached them it really touched them in a way and it's a very personal thing right and even if there are only 10 guys who do that it means a lot you know it means a lot that uh, it really accessed these people and it really spoke to them and connected with them in in ways that uh, you know and that's the real gratification right when when that you know when your music touches people's hearts yeah i think that's the real gratification sure sure so uh see in in terms of uh, uh you you've been a guitar player where where uh, you've created a certain style i mean when you think about bruce lee money uh, uh, as the name uh, when you think about uh, there are some names which come from different parts of the country you know there's sumit and you know amit datta and you know these kind of names ehsan nurani you know mm-hmm. guitar players you know leslie lewis all these guys there's been a you know there's always been a strong connection in terms of the guitar playing style and i've always seen that each person that whether i've interviewed them in the series or not each person has a unique style you know 
and it's not one of those things where you feel that okay this sounds like a uh, you know a any more lick or you know any of those instruction video kind of things where you, you learn how to shred on you know mm. not that you can't shred i'm sure you shred but in terms of creating that minimalistic style of playing you know that bluesy thing going going in and out and all that uh, did you did you uh, uh, specifically look at doing that you know to create uh, your own style or how did you how did you manage i i don't know i mean for me uh, because i i teach uh, uh, you know guitar i've been teaching for many years i really love it and yeah. I, i often get this uh, this kind of a question from people who are just getting into songwriting saying mm-hmm. how do you uh, how do you develop your own voice because uh, when you start with the process typically you're imitating your idols you're imitating the people you you truly admire and you're popping all their licks and you're uh, you know trying to imitate their their, sure. their 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 phrasing their tone all of that stuff right how do you go from there to having your own personality how do you go from there to having your own unique voice kind of thing sure sure and and the only answer i can come up with is uh, is it's not about practice it's not about how many hours you spend in the instrument it's not about how many licks you learn it's not about it's not about any of those things it's actually it's not about playing even it's about uh, i think it's about the other stuff you do when you're not playing right it's about the life you're living wow. right wow and, yeah uh, and you know i find that uh, the, the songwriters that i admire the most uh, mm-hmm. uh, are actually not the not the ones that have the most musical chops or the musical abilities or whatever it's the ones that have uh, the most interesting personalities right yeah. and or, that, or and better that, life experience yeah life experience and it's that that really attracts you know an audience because at some level if it's only about musical chops then you're only talking to musicians which is great that's fantastic but if you truly want to transcend that then it's about uh, man have you have you are you sharing a life experience that is really important or that's really valid or that's really trans that really transcends time i mean can what you share be relevant now or relevant 30 years before or 30 years from now is will it will it have the same will it access the same kind of uh, emotions in a person who's consuming it or listening to it sure. and uh, yeah that's that's the only thing i can think of i mean uh, i've had you know students there was a guy who uh, uh, who moved from a tiny village somewhere in uh, rajasthan to come and learn at academy and he used to come he used to come to class 6 days a week and practice 8 hours a day and in about uh, one month he was completely like burned out you're saying nothing is happening i can play all the licks i know all the scales i know all the chords but nothing is happening <laughs> and the only, and the only thing i had to tell him was man you need to live a life also you need to go have friends you need to fall in love you need to have your heart broken you need to have a job sure. you need to lose a job you need to have no money you need to have lots of money <laughs> you know and only from all that can you craft a musical personality otherwise just knowing all your scales and chords is yeah it's great a lot of people can do that but uh, there has to be yeah <laughs> man i never thought of it that way but yeah so so well put seriously uh, uh, i suppose you know when it comes to you know songwriting it is uh, what you have to say i mean whether it's your songwriting whether you write lyrics or or not so i i uh, you know we make music in hindi my hindi of course is abysmal i mean it's really bad but uh, so so uh, we need external help in terms of writing our lyrics and we we even borrowed from uh the uh, the great poet kabir so uh in in that sense uh but yeah it makes uh, it makes very uh a lot of sense when you say that it's it has to be about life experience and it it just can't be about chops you know in fact in fact in in most of our tracks uh you know i started producing most of the music in the last 7 8 years and whatever it's it's about now i look at the song length before i start you know it's it's right there and and that poor guitar solo if it's there you know <laughs> it's probably 12 bars or 16 bars at, at the most which is going to get cut anyways in the in the video edit so i mean just too bad that's the first thing which goes because the the mukhra and antra in this case you know the verse chorus whatever you might call it those are the the important the the important part of uh, the song but yeah you have to look at the entire structure of the song and and then figure out what takes more importance is as you said the chops are 
are not the the only thing it has to be about the song so and and chops are tools i mean the more uh, scales you know the more chords you know the more techniques you know they are tools and then so, it's about the taste and and decision and uh, and knowing the craft enough to know when to use what tools right correct. so uh, and obviously the more tools that you have the better you can express yourself but that doesn't mean you cannot express yourself with very few tools it's up sure. to, uh, that's up to again how those tools are used but that's where the the other aspect of yes you also need to practice you also need to devote the time to you know getting a good sound understanding hundreds of different techniques studying the masters really transcribing really copying all your idols for years before you start saying okay i'll take a little from here a little from there essentially all of us are stealing man come on that's that's what it is <laughs> yeah you you look at all your favorites and you sure. steal from all of them Sure. and if you're really good at stealing and if you really have enough of your own life experience to add to it the masala becomes so kind of unique to the recipe is presented in a way that oh this is truly unique actually it's not but <laughs> you know yeah. it's a, <laughs> it's uh, it's actually the same isn't it in terms of uh, even the language that we speak we learn a b c d when we are children then we build our vocabulary and we use that vocabulary to speak or write or communicate it's pretty much the same thing when it comes to music i mean it's building up a, a, a you know a sort of a vocabulary of licks and chops and you know creating those little templates in our heads where we go to you know looking at uh, a sad song you go minor you're looking at a happy song you go major i mean i'm just putting it very simply but yeah. that's the kind of stuff which eventually that's what it's all about it's about absolutely you know picking out the So here comes I mean you you're a teacher you got now you've opened the second branch now of the academy how do you pronounce that you know uh, people, Thomas people say Porter. yeah people say all kinds of things uh, academy 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 yeah. it all <laughs> works oh nice <laughs> yeah it all works we actually have uh, four four branches in the city right now and we work in about 13 different schools we employ about 60 full time musicians uh, and uh, right now we're going through some yeah tough times because all four centers are shut uh, students cannot come to our centers our faculty are working from home but uh, we managed to roll out an entire online program so yeah uh, uh, it's uh, it's out there and you know if and the best thing about it is that now we can address students around the country or around the world World. i yeah. i just got my first student from the uk i've got a couple of students in delhi so it will be really good if more people uh, you know who want uh, some good music instruction yeah putting it out there tacrami is now online uh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> let us know and we'll set you up with a session we'll see you know how we can help uh, but yeah it's uh, that's been a really good uh, uh, thing that uh, we've managed to put together across the last that's also almost 10 years old now we started in 2011 and uh, we had no inkling that it would grow to this size or whatever it just kind of uh, happened to to be this way but it's become a kind of ecosystem in bangalore uh, you know with all these musicians now being full time musicians thanks to this place and uh, we have all kinds of uh, uh, you know policies for them uh, which is like unconditional unlimited leave for gigs so all our faculty get uh, if they have a gig then you get leave no questions asked kind of thing <laughs> you know which is really difficult to manage as an organization but uh, really essential to do if you're working with musicians who are no, that's because you know, you're a musician yourself exactly yeah sure. So you know, we, you're not you're not a typical businessman who's running a you know university where you're teaching a yeah yeah but yeah but having said that you know being a musician and having the the smarts to something like this where you now I thought it was two branches but it's four branches and 60 you know employing 60 people and all that 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 makes it uh, even more admirable because usually musicians are quite myopic when it comes to Uh, you know their own craft and this thing but being able to look at it and uh, commercially making it viable for so many people not just yourself it's a very creditable thing that you're doing no thank you man it's not uh, again it a lot of credit goes to uh, you know the faculty themselves who have uh, who have bought into this dream i mean it is a dream at the end of the day saying can we have a self sustaining community of musicians who are just teaching who uh, work in a place go to a school uh and then have this to have the space to rehearse with their bands have the have the sort of ecosystem in place to uh, to play live uh sure. to you know and it's a very kind of you know when uh, uh when, our, when our teachers perform for example when they go out and play a lot of the students come for their gigs and the students parents and parents yeah. friends 
and yeah. when they release when they release something it's promoted on the on our on on the academy group and you know all of that stuff so there is a it's kind of it is a community more than anything else it's a community yeah. thing it's a we like to call it an organication and not an organization <laughs> because fantastic that is it's just grown like that uh, it has its challenges and right now it is it is really tough to uh, try and make it uh, happen but hopefully if we stay together and if we find ways to make it through this uh, the post covid world will yeah. uh, you know <laughs> i know have... no but i see i see that you know uh, creating music is is making something out of nothing and today i you know there's a very admirable thing about you is that you've created an entire world around yourself uh you know out of nothing it's it's actually out of nothing you created a world around you 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 know uh, spread it across and you know you're leading a full i mean you're leading a full life of performing songwriting teaching uh spreading knowledge it's it's fantastic man bruce really thank really you. admirable thank you man i mean just just trying to keep it all together <laughs> fantastic <laughs> so now i'm going to i'm going to put you in a spot i'm going to ask you to sing a song maybe uh, for this current situation if you have something or sure, anything yeah. maybe absolutely yeah, yeah we just love to hear you do a small bit for us yeah yeah, yeah. so this is the uh, this is the song that's being played on uh, uh, european radio and all that right now wow. it's a uh, it's a song called leaders of men and uh, it is i guess kind of relevant to what's going on because uh, it's no it's it's not uh, it's not wrong to say that uh, through a time like this when the world is going through some really difficult uh, uh, you know uh, periods we have we've seen quite you know bad examples of leadership you know when True. the people that we look up to the people that we really yeah. think will guide us through this and keep us together are doing exactly the opposite you know the so uh, yeah so it is a kind of topical thing i suppose and uh, sure. yeah i hope it uh, comes through the little mm. mic here yes <laughs> but here we go yeah and yeah this is uh, very inspired by uh, mark knopfler so in, again in terms of stealing i have uh, completely stolen uh, <laughs> the, the vibe don't from... be on don't be on <laughs> exactly so yeah and most people who hear it the first time say hey you you like mark knopfler don't you like yeah absolutely <laughs> and uh, total tip of the hat to the man and uh, yeah here it goes it's called leaders of men yeah it starts with uh, your head is about the same size you bleed you cry you get fat your head is about the same size you bleed you cry you get fat You lie and you cheat and you steal just like some of us Just like some of us Yeah there you are with the prize you live on stone on the mat You rose above you seal the deal not like any of us Not like any of us Suddenly your every word has its own gravity your every move is a study you will lead us of men you will lead us of men bastards now and then can we say well you will lead us of men you will lead us of men bastards now and then Can we say well to the leaders of men? To the leaders of men. <laughs> Whoa! Fantastic, fantastic, and the acoustic version sounds beautiful, man. Hey, yeah, <laughs> fantastic. I mean, I think that's the sign of uh, a great song. If it sounds equally good on just one voice and an acoustic guitar, I think. Yeah, got to win a test it's yeah. a good test for a song actually <laughs> can you play it with just one instrument and, voice <laughs> yeah, it sounds and it sounds great hey, thanks coco thank and, you so much yeah and thank you so much for doing this it was such a pleasure it's always a pleasure seeing you you on stage and then hanging out with you but you know i i remember the time where where you me and sonam on stage on parikrama and friends sonam da sonam da yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, you know those those fun times we had those three gigs we played 
yeah. in a row you know delhi bangalore and uh, where was the other one bombay bombay were you yeah. there in bombay you were yeah. there in bombay as well yeah yeah so all three shows where we were standing up there and uh, playing and uh, shredding those solos it was so much fun that's actually and the first time we actually hung out for any hung length out, of time yeah. i mean i I I I've seen you here's my chance to make you feel old uh, <laughs> i saw i saw you guys uh, i've been turn 50 this year man <laughs> are, wow fantastic yeah i saw you guys uh, in bangalore 1997 lee rockout uh, <laughs> okay yeah that was with lucid dreams uh, agni and pentagram that's the wow. that's the first time i saw you on stage you had uh, you had a they had this really small boss processor the boss some yeah, really yeah. anything and it, yeah, the b5 yeah the b5 that is yeah, yeah i bought it I, from roy venkat traman oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah and everyone was talking about man you got to check out these guys coco you know he's got this tiny processor but he makes it sound huge <laughs> and uh, and i remember being in the audience over there and watching you guys and saying yeah that that would be a nice place to be in you know on a stage like that with uh, with a band like that and so on so that's when i first saw you and uh, i don't think i met you at that gig you guys are all too big and you were just kids in the crowd <laughs> but uh, uh, but after that to you know be on stage with you and and have have that blast that we did with uh, sonam and rest of the parikrama gang uh, that was the first time we actually got to hang out and i got to know you and all of that so yeah it's great man thank you for doing this thank you for you know uh uh doing this whole series that you're doing and it's great that you're talking to all all of all musicians around and and just sharing this uh, this thing and i hope you know from these conversations people are able to get you know some yeah. something you know out of this so yeah, yeah thank you uh, really great talking to you and thanks for doing this fantastic thanks man thanks <laughs>